Hi, I'm David Lawrence, founder and CEO of the Mission Gate Foundation. Today, we're talking about fitting a KFO to the individual. KFO is knee, ankle, foot orthoses. I always want to start uh, with a patient describing the technology to them, not just stick a brace on them and have them walk away or try to utilize it, but understand what that brace is trying to accomplish. And this is a very lightweight carbon fiber, uh, a lot of high technology in this, in, in the race industry as well, uh, with some communications back and forth between different companies, which really brings you a product that's gonna give you good energy return, um, also good stabilization. In this particular case, as is the case with some of our patients seeing KFOs, we have a hyperextension tone issue and a quinavirus or an inverted ankle inversion problem with the ankle. So you'll see a boot around her foot, which gives, or around the foot plate, which gives her some support, doesn't need to have an insert over top of it, and it wraps around her, her ankle to give some stabilization and control. Also, there's a posterior leaf spring that has good energy return, but also bends fairly easily, so we're not forcing too much hyperextension. The brace with the knees and this posterior strap, the money strap I like to call it, will keep that knee from going into hyperextension. She can then use that tone to her benefit, but also then release that tone when she comes out of stance phase into swing. So she understands how the brace works. It's Velcro. Velcro is great in some ways, but of course it sticks to everything imaginable. You always want to kind of take your straps and strap them back to themselves whenever you go to put the brace on. So the first time I'm going to put it on for her so we can see how it fits and then we'll move on from there. So first things first in this process is getting down here where we have the patient basically step through the brace. So basically I'm putting right into a position where she stepped through the brace pulling back these little um, boot items until we get the ankle to slide back into place. If I've got that in a good position, I can stabilize that kind of AFO or ankle foot orthoses component into place and I know we've got her fairly well locked in. From there, I'm gonna take this guy and bring down this top component. There we go. The top strap is the one that holds the brace in alignment but doesn't wanna to be too tight. See here, I'm gonna lift up a little bit, come underneath her leg and take up all the slack, but in no time trying to cut off the circulation. The last, as we talked about, is this money strap. This is a strap that's gonna keep her from going into hyperextension. So in this particular case, we're gonna bring this guy around, loop it through. Here we go, and I'm gonna pull her leg forward or move her leg forward in the brace so I can take up all the slack on this posterior strap. That's gonna keep her from going into that hyperextension moment. At that point in time, I wanna take a quick look at the brace and just see, do we have a good fit? Should come from the orthodist, right? So this should all be done, but I don't take that for granted. I just wanna double check with the patient, is everything fitting like we need it to? Do I see any areas where it's gonna rub on her foot, where it could cut into her, where it could cause some skin irritation? which she may or may not feel. If she doesn't feel, that can be worse because she can get more of a wound on her foot and then we have to stop utilizing the brace for a time period. So I always want to check these things from the beginning. Now, we want her to walk always in a shoe, but I like her to stand the first time in a stable position without the shoe so that I can make sure that everything is fitting right in that, the AFO component of it. So I'm going to bring her back here. I'm going to use my knee to help block. As a physical therapist, a lot of times you need more than two hands. So at this point, Eleanor, I'm gonna have you kind of lean forward, go ahead and stand up like you normally do, and I'll stabilize this leg. Stand. Yep. There you go, perfect. And come right on up. There you go. That's it, and press. Perfect, all the way up to standing. This is gonna feel very awkward for her because she's used to having a shoe on. But I'm just gonna have you, if you don't mind, Eleanor, shift your weight a little bit towards it, perfect, and just stay right there. What I wanna check for, and let's just see where we're sitting in the brace, fitting in the boot correctly. Do I see any rub areas? Do I see any pressure problems? Anything that doesn't look like it's gonna cause an irritation on the malleolus, on the medial or lateral malleolus. Everybody up through, making sure we have a pretty decent fit. Again, I'm gonna come back here to stabilize. And you can just stand up nice and tall, Eleanor. Perfect. 
What she had some problem with early on is the very top of the brace was kind of cutting into her and rubbing. And they always want to make the brace a little too high, a little bit too long to start with because you can always cut it down, but you can't put it back. So nothing wrong with the trim lines being a little high and they need to be cut down a little bit so it doesn't pinch and cut into her. We also adjusted some of the straps specifically for her to help her be able to get it on a little bit better. All right, Eleanor, it looks good. So I'm going to have you go ahead and sit down. I'm going to just slide the leg out since we're not in a shoe and just let you sit right back into the chair. Perfect. From there, this brace would have had or did have a strap for the foot to hold the foot back into place. But that strap was very difficult for her to get on. And if you have a good shoe with a good lace up, a lot of times you don't need that strap and the shoe will hold the brace back in place. So you can check that with each patient. They can get it on with the strap on, great. If that's the reason why they can't get the brace on themselves, then you really do want to go ahead and see if you can take that guy off. Make sure the vamp's wide open on the shoe. Slide all the way up in. And then we're gonna take up the slack in the shoe and just simply make sure we've got a good fit holding her back into the brace. If I have that and I have plenty of length, I want a double knot so that it doesn't come loose. Once we have the patient sit back down, and we've got the brace and shoe and everything in place, the key isn't so much that we can do that for her here, but what can she do at home? So sometimes with a patient working with one arm for function, can they do that themselves independently? Maybe not at first. So you wanna bring in a family member, aid, someone that she can work with on a regular basis to help and make sure you train them as well. And over time, she builds up her more independence and in being able to do all the different moving parts. The problem with the KAFO is there's a number of straps and there's a lot of moving parts. So to get those moving parts all in one place is a bit of a tricky uh, task. So getting support at home so she can get the brace on and be using it, but also building up more and more independence over time and donning and doffing it. Second time, Eleanor, I'm gonna have you slide forward and stand up again. So she moves forward in the chair, gets that leg underneath her where she feels confident with it. And from the very beginning, I want her to go ahead, she stands up, is to push down into that brace and take some load on it. Perfect. Come all the way up to standing. Good, give me a step, half a step forward if you don't mind. There you go, and bring both the feet, there you go. A Little bit more on this side, excellent. Now, all I want from her is to stand up nice and tall, shift the weight onto that orthotic side. If you don't mind, keep doing that a few times. One, this is getting her to start to get some confidence that this leg can hold her up, but at the same time, gives me a chance to see is there anything rubbing or a problem? Are the straps tight enough, not too tight? Remember our strap back here, stopping hyperextension. That's gonna be one of her biggest concerns. So keep on weight shifting if you don't mind, Eleanor, just back and forth. So as she's going, I'm gonna go through this process and kind of talk to her about what kind of uh, you know, things she should or should not be thinking about with this brace. For example, like a wearing schedule. You don't put a brace like this on and just wear it all day. You wanna put it on for a couple hours at a time, hour off to check it and then add an hour like every other day of wearing time to make sure wherever it's rubbing or there's a problem you don't create a bigger problem before you get it adjusted or, or adapted for you and adjustments is exactly right because how she is loading it the very first day and how she's walking and moving on it and putting pressure on it uh, as the weeks go by it's going to change which means that the device may be comfortable on day one very uncomfortable a week or so later pinching up into the groin area, pinching around the knee, some place where it's catching or not fitting well. That's not that anything wrong with the brace. That means you're putting a lot more pressure on it than you were used to, Eleanor, and now you're gonna get a little bit more pressure that we need to adapt. So that means there was always a communication with your, our orthotic friends to say, is this, can we make an adjustment here? Can we get this adapted to fit her a little bit better? And the last thing is instructions in and out of the brace. If you're in the brace, very obvious, get on your feet, Eleanor, anytime you can, standing up nice and tall, checking everything out in front of you so you know where you're at and you've got your posture just right, and thinking, can I weight shift? From there, stepping and walking, which we'll show you in a second of her moving, and then at the same light, from that component, um, the idea of transfers, can I use it to transfer? So at this point, Eleanor, I'm gonna have you step back to the chair, and on an old brace, she would just kick the leg out in front of her and sit down. Now what she's gonna work on here is her ability to stand up tall, shift a little bit of weight onto the orthotic, there you go, kick her hips back, 
See how she overcame that extension moment by simply not trying to force it and creating more tone, by putting herself in a really good position and then ride the orthotic down to the seat. Now you say, well, gosh, should I, if I'm going to be sitting there for a few hours watching a movie, can I just take it off? Sure you can, but it's beneficial if you can early on to leave it on more than you take it off. So that your body gets used to that mechanic, feels the pressure, keeps your alignment right, keeps your foot in a good alignment, and it doesn't roll over. So those ideas of utilizing the brace when it's on or even when it's off. And then the thing, the thing you want to talk to the patient about or work with them on is the idea of progression. Where are we going to go with this? In the future, is Eleanor's situation going to improve? And we can look at a situation where we can get less brace over time. Is it a situation where it's likely to go the opposite direction? We're going to need more brace over time. We're somewhere in the middle where we're not really sure. Hopefully she's going to improve and she's going to get more out of the brace, make this race car work for her and really help her. But at the same light, that's going to be the brace she'll need in the future. So those are things that we work out and we start working on. You don't have that crystal ball, but you want to have an idea with the technology. Where am I going and what is it doing for me? Thank you for watching and we hope you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on orthotic rehabilitation ranging from selecting the appropriate orthosis to comprehensive gait training with an orthotic. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. Stay up to date on our latest content. Click the link in the corner to subscribe and be sure to like and share this video. Also, let us know what you think in the comments section below.